Hey everyone, have you ever wondered what it's like to travel from Donner Lake to Donner Summit on the old Lincoln Highway? Well, that's what we're going to do today. I am on the Lincoln Highway about halfway up, so we can look down and see Donner Lake. And if I look over this way behind me, I can see the old 40 Highway. And up there you can see the train tunnel, which has a lot of incredible history. And then behind me up this way, sorry if there's wind noise, is Donner Summit. If you're a history buff, you know that this area had three highways that traveled over the summit. And the first one was the Lincoln Highway. The Lincoln Highway was conceived by a guy named Carl Fisher in 1913. And this was completed probably in about 1914 or 1915. Following that, we had Old 40 became the route, the preferred route. And that was completed in 1927. It was largely dependent on the famous historic bridge, they called the Rainbow Bridge, up there, which was completed in 1926 and then was open to the public in 1927. So from 1927 until 1960, that was the preferred route. And in 1960 is, was the Squaw Valley Olympics, and that's when they opened uh, I-80 to the public. The difference between the Lincoln Highway and Old 40 is that once the interstate was built, Old 40 was kept open. It's still open today. It's got a rock fall in it right now, but it's generally open. There's a lot of recreation and activity up here. The, the bridge is incredible. More on that later. But for now, it's a route that you could still travel. Lincoln Highway, on the other hand, was abandoned. It's kind of an abandoned trail, but you can still travel it. No motorized vehicles. You can walk it or mountain bike it. I'm impressed by how rough and difficult it is, so I don't really recommend biking it. Hiking it's probably better. So if you're wondering how to get to the beginning of the trail, it's a little tricky, and there's two ways you can do it. I explored the bottom. I'm going to show you a picture of the street address of the house where it is on, on Old Highway Road near the west end of Donner Lake. You can start there, but you just walk behind houses. It's probably better to just drive up the uh, Old 40 for a bit, about a half a mile. On your left, you'll see an area where there's kiosks, and that's a trailhead. You may as well just start there and catch the Lincoln Highway. You're going to miss a little bit of it, but that's fine. So let's continue to explore, and we'll check out the whole thing all the way up and the history of it and take an aerial view and check out the tunnels and the train and talk more about the history prior to the highway. Once you get on the trail, you'll see this bridge, and you definitely want to take it because it'll save you the trouble of crossing the creek. I think the Lincoln Highway crosses the creek, but you don't want to do that. And you can look at the creek, and then there's this old sign which shows some of the old destinations. Following that, we come across this really cool meadow area. I think it's in the Beaver Pond area. And then the Lake and Highway just turns into kind of an overgrown road. But it's pretty easy to follow at this point. We travel along the Lincoln Highway for a while. It's below Old 40, but then it starts to climb up pretty seriously. And it's good to keep in mind that back in the day, they didn't plow it in the winter time, So it could be a variable grade and some steep sections. But once they built Old 40, you usually got to keep it within about 7 or 8%. Otherwise, the snow plows can't handle it. So we see a lot of grade variation on the Lincoln Highway. Here's one of the steep areas on the Lincoln Highway, and you can see a culvert down here and a kind of a washout area, and then the road continues up steeply. And of course, it's signed that you shouldn't ride across it on your mountain bike, but the skilled folks could certainly do it. The area that I'm traveling through right now is pretty washed out. It's pretty much a rough single track. I am on the Lincoln Highway, but it's just largely overgrown and washed out and not maintained. But it's still here. Looking at this area, they clearly have paved it with some stones. This does not look natural. That tree right there has grown since it was abandoned. It's remarkable to me how rough this cobbled area is. I mean, I can't even imagine riding a mountain bike over it. And we have to realize that back in the day, the first travelers came over here in Model T's. So I would imagine that mechanical failures, overheating, flat tires, all that stuff would have been extremely common. And you really had to have a sense of adventure because taking the railroad would have been a hell of a lot easier. And here's something that's kind of unique to this very large snow year. It is late July right now, and there's still a snow field that I need to negotiate. But not too bad. Okay, that's a little bit slick. Micro spikes would not be a bad idea for this, but I'm getting over it okay. Okay, so we're at a standoff here at a little creek, and you can see this abutment here. Which is, there was clearly a bridge here, and you can see how this is constructed. It's pretty nice. I'm going to walk out on it a little bit, and it just drops straight off right here and then it connects over there. So we're just going to have to figure out how to get across. To me, it doesn't look terribly difficult, so I'm just going to climb down there and scurry across there and climb back up the other side. Should be a breeze. And you can see the Lincoln Highway continuing on the other side. There's a nice view from where you can see the bridge supports there and the creek below me. I hope you can hear it. It's a beautiful sound. And then over there, on the left side, we're looking at Donner Lake. Fortunately, crossing has been relatively easy. It's just a little bit of a climb up the other side. And we're back in business here on the built-up area. This is the first time I've seen this. There's an area here where you can see some tar that was applied to kind of keep the rocks in place. And 
That's the first of this that I've seen. There's probably more of it, but, but it's gone now. Now, as we get higher, we can see a portion of the historic Rainbow Bridge up there. And it turns out I did not have to get on Old 40 at all. We are still on the Lincoln Highway just below Old 40. If you look carefully above those rocks, you could see a guardrail right in the middle of the frame. That's Old 40. Here's a really nice view of the Lincoln Highway as things open up. If you look up above, there's a really nice view of the train snow sheds up there. And we can look down the valley here towards Donner Lake. And then over there is the Highway 40. So we've now achieved the same elevation as Highway 40. All right, this area is just below the Rainbow Bridge and you can see the Lincoln Highway very clearly here as we fly along above it. And it's nice and wide open here. And then as we move down a little bit, you can see it goes into the trees and the brush. And this is kind of a messy section. On the left, you can see old 40 above the Lincoln Highway. And then we're going to swing around and we'll be able to see toward Donner Lake. And then as we swing around more, we see uh, Highway 40 again. And then we can also see the Lincoln Highway going way down the ravine there. And if you look at the upper right, you can see the snow shed where the train goes. And again, we're cruising along the Lincoln Highway and we get a really nice view of it here. It's another nice view of the Lincoln Highway as it heads down the valley. Now we're going to look at the snow shed of the train up above. And this is the modern line that's still used today with the modern style of snow shed. They used to be made of wood and now they're more uh, made of concrete. And you see an access uh, area in the snow shed, presumably for service. I'm not sure if uh, the road next to the snow shed is navigable or not. It looks a little dicey, but maybe that's how they get to it. I'm not sure. And here's another view of the old 40. And you can see I-80 in the distance. This is an area where you got to kind of pay attention. There's been a, a lot of rock falls over the years. And the, road is kind of lost. So you, just, you just have to weave your way through the boulders. There's nobody on it right now, but that's one of the famous rock walls that people like to climb. Here's another wall they're working on. This guy's climbing up. He's top roped up there and climbing up this wall. And then if we look over to the right, there's another guy way up there. Just reaching the summit. From what I can tell, I'm still on the Lincoln Highway, but it gets pretty rough in here. It's kind of following along a, a creek, as it were. But on the bright side, I just came across this beautiful stand of flowers. It looks really cool. Look at these. Really nice. I'm also noticing there's been a lot of trees cut down here. And I suspect that could be in an effort to kind of reopen the path, the Lincoln Highway path, because it's really pretty grown in up here. I'm glad I decided to hike this rather than trying to mountain bike it, because some of these areas are pretty rough. This is obviously a place where boulders have fallen in on the trail. A tree is growing. It's pretty messy, but I am virtually certain that I'm still on the Lincoln Highway. So we'll just keep plugging away. More boulders. We're up near the railroad tunnels right now, and there you can see one of the famous walls that the Chinese laborers built. Beautifully done. Here's some information on the China Wall and the laborers that were involved in building the railroad back in the day. All right, so this part of the trip is definitely a bit of an adventure. There's a place where the highway just kind of disappears and there's just so much brush. It's really impossible to get through. I know where the highway is. It's over that way. We're just a little bit under the Rainbow Bridge, which is over that way. The Lincoln Highway is just over there somewhere. So I'm going to work my way over there. I think the highway itself is just covered in brush. There's some little lakes down here. We're just going to find our way through and get back to where it opens up and the road is in better shape again. Okay, I think I found the Lincoln Highway. This is it right here, and then if I look, I came from over there, and then this is where the Lincoln Highway is. It just goes right down, down into that brush. So I imagine that if this Lincoln Highway becomes a more popular thing to explore, and maybe sometime in the future they'll clear out that area, who knows. That's the Lincoln Highway right through there, and a little ahead of that is the pond that I just showed you. And the highway apparently goes right through the pond, but maybe the pond wasn't there back in the day. You know, things have changed, all the trees have grown. But I'm at the other end of here, and now we see that terrain opens up a little bit, and then the highway is more visible. 
and you can see up ahead, and I'll zoom in, there's a rock wall up there that's part of the highway. And there's a whole group of climbers. There must be a group attempting to climb up there. Now's a good time to talk a little bit about the Rainbow Bridge. As I mentioned, it was established in 1927. And then in 1990, it was in a state of disrepair and they decided it'd be easier to replace it than to try to renovate it. Of course, there's a public uproar about that and the funds were put together to renovate it. It cost $1.6 million to renovate this bridge in 1990. Okay, definitely some more bushwhacking, but supposedly, I'm on the right course, but I think the highway has disappeared under the brush at this point, but I'm hoping again to pop out into the open and find it. Okay, here's what I believe to be true. I think this is the, maybe the newer version of the Lincoln Highway here. But the reason I'm confused is if you look down there, you see a road right there. And I think that's the old highway. So what I'm gonna do, and I don't think this road went back down there. I think it was a separate route. So what I'm gonna do is make my way back down through this section here, try to pick up that road, because I think that's the road where it had the tunnel that went under the railroad. There's a lot of detritus in this area from snow sheds above, and it's mostly consists of lumber, but there's this curious, really heavy duty piece of iron here. It's not a leaf spring, but it's some kind of roundish device. All right, so I'm in the underpass right now under the Lincoln Highway, and this underpass was completed in about 1914, which was about the time that the Lincoln Highway was completed. But it's good to keep in mind that this was a thoroughfare before the Lincoln Highway, so people would come up here. And the lore is that in the old days, there was a snow shed up here. So the drivers would come up to the snow shed, turn off their engine, slide open the snow shed door, and listen for trains. And if there were no trains coming, they would go into the shed and drive along the tracks. I'm pretty sure there wasn't enough room for a train and a car, so they had to do it one at a time. So it's obviously a really unsafe situation. So even as early as 1914, they decided that an underpass here would be a good idea. All right, I'm in one of the snow sheds right now. And it's quite eerie. There's a lot of graffiti. And uh, the roof is really trippy. A lot of white veins. And then some more graffiti on the supports over here on the right. And also on the original rock. And here's a really nice view of the China Wall that was completed by the Chinese laborers way back in the day. The other thing that I should mention is once we pass under the railroad, we're above the railroad. So the famous Tunnel 6, which is 1,600 feet long, is below us. And that's the tunnel that was built by the Chinese laborers. And it took, depending on who you talk to, one to two years to build. And there were as many as, well, some estimates are 8,000, other estimates are 12,000 to 15,000 Chinese laborers who were instrumental in making the railroad happen. And the railroad was a big deal. It has to be remembered that the first crossing over Donner Pass was in 1844, and the railroad was completed in 1866. So in a period of 24 years, travel over the Sierra went from being this ordeal where you're likely to not survive and it would take months to becoming a rather simple trip. It changed hugely during that time. Funny, it's how we reached the summit. The, the willows have taken over again and the Lincoln Highway becomes a fairly walkable path. I believe this is the last bit of the Lincoln Highway up to Donner Summit. It's pretty steep. Just imagine the old Model T's chugging up this back in the day. All right, in the distance there, you can see the famous Donner Summit snow shed, and we're on this little abandoned road here, and we're gonna work our way around there. And to the right, I don't know if you can see it, but it's real small to the right of it, by the cars, there's a kiosk. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. This is more about the railroad than the Lincoln Highway, but it's definitely worth checking out because this is a very important place that I'm at right now. This was the shaft in the center of Tunnel 6 that they bored down so that they could lower people down to work down there. And then in that way, they were working on the tunnel from four directions, from the east side, the west side, and in the middle, from both directions trying to meet up. And still, the tunnel took two years to construct. Okay, at Donner Summit, there's all these kiosks with uh, plaques and a whole bunch of stuff to read. And I recommend that you do stop and read these. They're really informative, but it's beyond the scope of this video for me to cover those. But what I will mention is this famous snow shed at the summit here. And this is where the workers that originally kept the road open in the winter lived during those cold months. I should point out that the Lincoln Highway was never cleared in the winter. This would apply to the old 40, which was 
completed in 1927. Thank you so much for coming along with me today and exploring the Lincoln Highway. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And until next time, thanks for watching.